Hello friends, dear learners and my dear student. First of all, I welcome you on the lecture Ultraviolet Visible Spectrophotometry. I am Dr. S. R. Lovde, working as an associate professor in the department of chemistry. Student, in previous lecture we discussed the optical components of the spectroscopy. We also discussed the arrangement of these optical components for absorption spectroscopy as well as for emission spectroscopy. In today's lecture we discuss the monochromatic system that is a wavelength selector for absorption spectroscopy. Wavelength selector These are the devices which isolate Wavelength selector are the devices which isolate a narrow band of electromagnetic radiation for the measurement. Therefore, here wavelength selector selector are the devices which isolate a narrow band band of electromagnetic radiation for the measurement for the measurement Student, in previous lecture we discussed the radiation source used in absorption spectroscopy that is a tungsten filament lamp and the deuterium lamp. Tungsten filament lamp gives the visible radiation while deuterium lamp gives the ultraviolet radiation. Both tungsten filament lamp as well as deuterium lamp are the continuum source. Continuum source of radiation that means this this source gives the all possible wavelength and here this all possible wavelength cannot be utilized for the absorption measurement now in absorption spectroscopy we know that we place a sample in a light path and decrease in radiant power of the incident beam is measured for measurement of the absorbance of the solution now when we irradiate a sample with electromagnetic radiation, sample absorbs electromagnetic radiation at a specific wavelength. At other wavelength sample is transparent. Now when substance absorbs electromagnetic radiation, what happens in the substance? That means here, substance or that molecule have a bonding molecular orbital and anti-bonding molecule. Because we are dealing with the molecular absorption spectroscopy, there is molecules and molecules that are formed by the combination of two or more atoms. Therefore, here there are atomic, sorry, there are molecular orbitals in a molecule. Those may be bonding molecular orbital or anti-bonding molecular orbital. The bonding molecular or orbital and anti-bonding molecular orbital are said to be a electronic energy levels. Therefore, here bonding molecular orbitals are the lower energy electronic energy levels and anti-bonding molecular orbitals are the higher energy electronic energy levels. Therefore, when we irradiate sample with electromagnetic radiation, electrons from bonding molecular orbital are get promoted to anti-bonding molecular orbital. That means here electronic transition takes place when a substance absorbs electromagnetic radiation. When all orbitals that means bonding as well as anti-bonding molecular orbital both are completely filled then there is no electronic transition A sample does not absorb electromagnetic radiation. But when sample absorbs electromagnetic radiation, electron from ground state electronic energy level are get promoted into excited state electronic energy level and hence 
for this excitation energy is absorbed from the electromagnetic radiation because electromagnetic radiation that is a source of energy and these electron are get promoted to higher energy level by the absorption of electromagnetic radiation therefore this absorption takes place at specific wavelength because substance absorbs only those energy which is required for electronic transition from ground state electronic energy level to excited state electronic energy level therefore this gap is called as delta e energy difference between two levels energy difference between ground state and electronic state and electronic uh, ground state and excited state electronic energy level only this much difference related with the energy that is absorbed by the electromagnetic radiation therefore this this molecule will absorb a electromagnetic radiation which only provide this much energy for the electronic transition and when it absorbs this energy here this electron is get promoted into the excited state electronic energy level and therefore molecule absorbs electromagnetic radiation after excitation of electron the distribution of electron is get changed here then there is change in dipole moment of the molecule because dipole moment is related with the electron and when electronic transition takes place earlier distribution and after excitation distribution of electrons are different then we can say that the molecule have a different dipole moment therefore dipole moment change in dipole moment or dipole of the molecule is related with the absorption of electromagnetic radiation if sample does not absorb electromagnetic radiation then there is no change in dipole but when it absorbs electromagnetic radiation definitely there is change in dipole therefore dipole of the molecule is get change when the substance absorbs electromagnetic radiation therefore substance absorbs at specific wavelength because only those radiations are required which provides the energy for this excitation other radiations are not required by the sample therefore sample is transparent to that radiation it does not absorb those radiation therefore in order to carry out electronic excitation by providing only those energy which is required for the molecule and this is carried out by using a monochromatic radiation therefore monochromatic radiation that is a source of energy or that is a radiation which provides only the energy for excitation of the electron of the molecule from ground state level to excited state level if we use polychromatic radiation for this excitation polychromatic radiation also gives similar type of excitation of electron but when we use a polychromatic radiation whatever the amount of energy utilized for this purpose that is negligible one and that cannot be detected that is change in radiant power is not detected by the detector and so the monochromatic radiations are required for a absorption measurement therefore absorption measurement is carried out by using a monochromatic radiation and monochromatic radiation means radiations have a specific bandwidth radiations have a specific color or radiations having specific energy that is utilized for the excitation of molecule student now we discuss what are different monochromatic or wavelength selector utilized in molecular absorption spectroscopy that is a monochromatic here wavelength selector wavelength selector are the devices which isolate a narrow band of narrow band of wavelength for from from the 
micrometers. These are the devices that isolates a narrow band of wavelength from a continuum source which provides all different wavelengths. Therefore, here wavelength selectors are classified into different types. Wavelength selectors, wavelength selectors are classified in different types. And first type of wavelength selector that is called as filters. Filters. Filters, these are the wavelength selector which isolate a specific band of electromagnetic radiation while other radiations are cut off. Therefore, filters are the devices which allows a specific radiation, specific electromagnetic radiation and other are cut off by absorption. The filters are classified into two types. Number one is called as absorption filter. In absorption filter, absorption filter, the radiations are the unwanted, the unwanted radiations are removed, are removed by the absorption. Here unwanted radiation means radiations which are not required for the analysis. Therefore, for example, here this is a plastic plate and here there is a glass which is coated with glass coated with gelatin such a type of filter is called as a absorption filter if this gelatin have a green color and if you pass a polychromatic radiation polychromatic radiation from 400 to 750 nanometer then here outcoming radiation have a green color because here the gelatin have green color and only green color radiation that is 500 to 560 nanometer that wavelength is allowed to pass through this filter while remainder are get absorbed. These filters are this type that means here this is a plastic body inside the plastic body a glass plate colored glass is placed and this colored glass when we place in light path and here this is a source that gives only this green color radiation. Therefore in this way these filters are constructed. Therefore here a colored glass is placed in the body of plastic and this have a provision to place into the light path in order to isolate such a type of a particular wavelength. Therefore here these are having a different color and here the wavelength of that particular color is mentioned on this filter. Therefore we can directly place that filter in light path in order to isolate a particular electromagnetic radiation for the measurement. Student here in before this construction of filter many times a colored solution or dye solution may be used as a 
monochromator. Therefore, that color solution is placed in light path. A monochromatic radiation are obtained, and after that, measurement is carried out. And now we have an advanced system that is a prism monochromator or diffracting grating monochromator. Therefore, here filters are generally used in visible region. Therefore, filters are utilized for isolation of visible radiation or visible wavelength. We can isolate by using a filter. Second type of filter is called as a interference filter. Interference filter. Interference filter works on interference phenomenon. That means here interference phenomenon is the particular interference filter works on works on interference phenomena and here by absorption filter by absorption filter we can isolate a bandwidth from 50 to 60 nanometer and by the interference filter we can isolate a bandwidth up to 10 nanometer therefore bandwidth bandwidth of monochromatic radiation monochromatic radiation up to up to 10 nanometer can be isolated by using this interference filter. Student, we discuss how this constructed and how this work. Interference filter, as I told you, it is work on interference phenomena. There is a semi-transparent, there is semi-transparent a metal plate semi transparent metal plate plate made up of a silver a thin fine semi transparent silver plate is formed made up of silver over this plate a material is coated and that is a optically transparent. Therefore, this material which is coated over here that is called as dielectric material like Mg up to magnesium fluoride. Dielectric material this is insulator. Insulator and here it is optically transparent. Optically transparent means it passes the electromagnetic radiation. This spacer that is here, there is only a creation of space and here it attaches spacer. And here a glass plate is coated on this spacer in order to protect the dielectric material. This glass plate. This is the construction of a interference filter. A interference filter. Interference filter. Name is given because it works on interference phenomenon. Now when a incident radiation or radiation from the source are falls on this filter. Then what happens here? When this radiation strikes on the spacer, there is a space, there is a vacuum type. Therefore, velocity of the radiation is get changed in this spacer. Therefore, here velocity when radiation strikes on the 
spacer or it could be traversed from this glass plate to this metal plate there is a space and therefore in that space the velocity of radiation is get change and when this radiation strikes on this metal plate silver plate that radiations are get reflected back in this fashion sorry in this fashion therefore here some radiations are reflected back and here when this reflection is in phase then the amplitude of a incident radiation is get increase and when this reflection is out of phase then amplitude of incident radiation is get vanished and there is no wave that means here this spacer changes the velocity of the radiation and when radiation reaches to this metal plate those some radiations are get reflected not total some radiations are get reflected and when reflected radiation mix with the incident radiation having similar wavelength and when this mixing or interaction takes place with in phase then destructive sorry then constructive phenomena increases the amplitude of the wave and when this reflection is out of phase then amplitude of one wave is get cancelled with the another wave then there is a destructive phenomena and that wave is vanish therefore here interference that is the responsible for isolation of electromagnetic radiation and here a when there is in phase reflection radiations are allowed to pass through the semi transparent metal plate and some radiations are cut off that means here amplitude that will be get changes and therefore velocity as well as the wavelength of radiation is get changes student in brief we discuss the constructive and destructive interference phenomenon with reference to tsunami you are familiar with tsunami tsunami that is a earthquake occurs in the ocean or in a sea and due to tsunami a waves a series of series of water waves are generated and those transports the water towards the beach or that is a yen of the sea or this ocean therefore here this is a center where this tsunami occurs and here small waves are generated in this fashion and those are get strikes to this beach or a yen of the sea where is where there is swelling that means these waves are get vanish here here many times these waves are reflects back reflects back from this yen in this fashion again back when here suppose for example when a wave passing in this direction having this amplitude that is towards the beach side and another wave when it would be traveling in opposite direction with the same amplitude at that time what happens here amplitude of resultant wave is getting increased in this fashion like this and then here we have a another wave that means here when this reflection is in phase
then amplitude of first wave and amplitude of second wave that is amplitude of this wave and amplitude of this wave are get added and we have amplitude equal to the amplitude of two wave therefore height of this wave is increases therefore here the wave length of the wave is also get change therefore such a radiations are allowed to pass through this interference filter suppose for example the wave is traveling in this direction towards this side and another wave then it is reflecting in this fashion again towards the ocean at that time amplitude of one wave is get cancelled with the another wave and there is no wave and this type of phenomenon is called as disruptive disruptive phenomenon here disruptive interference that cancels the waves and here a constructive phenomenon constructive phenomenon that increases the amplitude of the wave and in similar fashion that interference filter is work student now we discuss the monochromatic system utilizes spectrophotometry and that is called as a prism and diffracting grating therefore when prism and diffracting grating are used then that are called as monochromators here the filters that is absorption filter as well as interference filter applicable only in visible region because here we require a broader band of electromagnetic radiation from 40 to 50 nanometer a wavelength band is required and in case of uv region a ultraviolet region here this much radiations are not allowed we require radiation 1 nanometer to 0.5 nanometer in range for determination therefore such a type of radiations or such a type of bandwidth of the radiation that can be isolated by using a prism monochromator or diffracting grating monochromator therefore here monochromators are the two types and that is called as number one is prism and number two is diffracting grating diffracting grating and the prism monochromator therefore here we discuss first one prism monochromator prism that is a dispersion medium or you know it utilized to obtain a monochromatic radiation therefore here this is a radiation source we know that this source gives all possible wavelength this is a slit here this is a prism a triangular glass set uh, made up of quartz here this is a radiation given from the source on this prism this prism reflects this radiation in this fashion here the path of the radiation is get changed one type of radiation are using this part another type of radiation are using this part and here in this lens this part is again changed therefore this radiation that gives in a one region this radiation gives one region therefore when we plus when we place a slit here this is a exit slit here we can have a sample cell such a type of radiation that are obtained by using a prism and they here bandwidth up to 5 to 1 nanometer that can be obtained by using this prism monochromator radiation from the source are made 
parallel here by this quadrimeting lens, quadrimeting lens. Then that given to the prism, prism changes the path of the radiation. One path radiation and another path radiation. Those are get separated into different region by this another focusing lens. And here we have different level. One is lambda one, another is lambda two. Up on the basis of requirement, lambda one is allowed to pass through the sample, or sometimes lambda two is allowed to pass through the sample. In this way, prism monochromatic works, and it obtain a narrow band up to one nanometer. Second type of monochromatic that is used in spectrophotometry. Or as diffracting lighting. Diffracting lighting. Diffracting lighting are the special type of monochromatic that isolate a wavelength from one nanometer to point one nanometer. Is sharp. Line or a sharp band of wavelength that can be obtained by using a diffracting grating. How these diffracting gratings are constructed? In a diffracting grating, there is there are there are fifty thousand to thirty thousand grooves are prepared. The channels are prepared on the are prepared on the highly polished alumina, highly polished alumina. Alumina is here two or three. That's for special grade aluminium oxide is used for this purpose. It is highly polished and here. A small grooves are prepared over this in this fashion. Therefore, here these grooves act as a reflecting media for the incident radiation. Therefore, here this is a reflecting media, and by using this diffracting grating, we can isolate a specific radiation whose bandwidth is up to 0.1 nanometer. Now we discuss how does it work. Now we are in this case radiation from the source. Suppose this is a one slit. This is a source. These radiations are given on this quantum mirror for angular dispersion. This is a quantum mirror. Radiation from quantum mirror to diffracting grating. Here, this is a diffracting grating. In this way, these radiations are given. When this radiation falls on the diffracting grating, here, diffracting grating gives two types of radiation. Here, in this fashion. Again, here. There is a another quantum mirror. This is quantum mirror. This is also a quantum mirror. This is gives the angular angular dispersion. Angular dispersion that can be carried out by using this quantum mirror. After that, these two wavelengths. Are get isolated differently as a lambda one and as a lambda two. Here, this is a gypsum slit. In this way, the diffracting grating are work. The compact disc which we are having here with this, when we rotate that complex disc in different direction, we have a different color. That is a work form of diffracting grating. But that is made up of acrylic material. Here it is made up of highly polished alumina. Therefore, here 
this is a diffracting gratting we can isolate up to 0.1 nanometer wavelength by using this diffracting gratting in a instrument instrument rotates this diffracting gratting in such a way that a specific wavelength is obtained in front of the elect in front of the sample cell therefore by rotating this diffracting gratting either to this direction or to this direction here a specific radiations are obtained from here on the sample cell and in this way there are the four types of monochromator one is absorption filter second is interference filter absorption and interference filters are used in visible region while the monochromator that is prism monochromator and diffracting gratting monochromator are used in a spectrophotometry now we discuss the next component of the spectrophotometer that is a sample cell sample cell it is called as a window material sample cell in spectrophotometry called as sample cell called as window material window material that means here the material which holds the sample but that should be transparent to that wavelength or that particular region of analysis therefore on the basis of region of analysis this window material is selected and a sample cell is constructed from that window material for example in visible region visible region particularly the 400 to 750 nanometer we are familiar with ordinary silicate glass silicate glass can be used as a window material which is transparent in visible region transparent in visible region therefore for colorimetric measurement or for visible measurement a glass cell can be utilized but glass absorbs in ultraviolet region therefore in ultraviolet region when we have carried out the measurement then glass is replaced by a fused silica fused silica or it is also called as quartz here a quartz cells are used therefore quartz these are the transparent in uv as well as in uv and visible region therefore both uv as well as visible region measurement can be carried out by using this a quartz cell but in case of ultraviolet region here this is uv for uh, ir region glass as well as quartz both are absorbs ultraviolet radiation therefore ultraviolet spectroscopy utilizes in window material as a crystalline or crystals of nacl kbr potassium bromide or sometimes nabr therefore here cells are made up of either nacl kbr or sodium bromide but this cell have a drawback that are water soluble and that can easily attack by the moisture as well as water therefore here fogging of this material takes place and nowadays in a modern instrument here these cells are also replaced by using a polymeric material therefore polymeric material can be used as a window material in ir spectroscopy student this is all about the monochromatic system and sample cell utilized in a spectroscopic analysis in next lecture we discuss how the radiations are detected by using a device that is called as detector with this we stop here i wish you all the best keep learning happy learning thanks for joining me